Let's talk about the Trenoff Altitude 16 and the best things that I've liked about using it. So my time with the Trinoff Altitude 16 is winding down. I'm going to be pulling out of the rack probably sometime in the next week, going back to my Marantz and setting some other things up more stably, basically returning it where it came from. I've made a number of videos about it, and I've got a couple more things in mind. I've got this Things I Like video. I'm going to follow this up with the Things That I Don't Like video. And then once I get the Marantz back in and I have a chance to rewatch some of the same content that I've been enjoying on the Trinoff, I'll be able to do kind of a final verdict in a last comparison. So then, what are the couple of things about the Trinoff that I think are just exceptional? Number one, configurability. This thing can do anything. Tons of detailed options, massively configurable speaker configurations, so many channels and so on that it really, it's a very, very powerful device. It gives you the ability to tailor your specific performance and operation of your system to a degree that's just like a step function, an order of magnitude more than your run-of-the-mill receiver, certainly, and even some of the more higher-end Marantz and, and other types of processors and stuff that are out there. So if you have the type of system that demands or needs or benefits from that nth degree of attention to detail in terms of the operation of, of everything related to your system, your audio, your speakers, and your setup, that would just be a major selling point, be a major reason why somebody would want one of these things. Number two, and I think part of the benefit that flows from number one, it's based on the fact of this is a Linux-based, a, a computer-based platform, totally expandable via software and the potential to do more in hardware in the future as well. It's a very expensive device, sure, but I guess it's one of those things where you buy it, right, and you use it for a very long time. As they develop features, more and more features related to the Trinoff should be software-based than hardware-based, and you're going to be able to get those. Take, for example, the comparison. I'm looking at even an Anthem, an Anthem AVM70 potentially, is my next preprocessor, my next preamp after using the Marantz. That's close to a $4,000 device, and while that will certainly get some software updates, it might get some new features and capabilities over time. It's due to get its HDMI 2.1 upgrade. After that, it's going to be pretty pretty much more static. And so at some point in time, I don't know exactly when, four years, five years, probably going to be ready for another preamp because technology is going to advance and things are going to change. And so there's another four grand minus whatever the AVM70 or, or whatever preamp you know might sell for after the fact. That Marantz that I have right now, the AV7704, a few years ago was $2,500-ish MSRP. What am I going to be able to sell that for when I upgrade to my Anthem now? Maybe a grand, 1200 or so, retaining 50% of the value. So you stretch that over a long enough period of time and, of course, crying or, or taking the hit to spend 18 grand on something like a Trenoff now and benefiting from its use, its expansion, its updates, and so on over all that time. Maybe it starts to mathematically make sense, particularly if you need the power you need that configuration and you can take advantage of all of those features in your space. More and more, particularly with a couple pieces of gear, I'm coming to realize that cutting corners really just costs you more money in the long run. So again, spend more, spend more, get more, and have a more stable purchase that you're going to benefit from, you're going to use, it's going to last longer and it's going to take you farther versus still spending considerable chunks of money multiple times potentially over the years. With that piece, with that computer-based architecture, I mean, Trinoff is going to be able to to update hardware and continue to just develop software features over time. And it creates, again, so much configurability, so much expandability. I really love the assignable connections to the individual, you know, driving out to the amp and to the speakers versus having fixed amp assigns. The amp assigns in so many devices are generally very fixed. It's this channel, it's this channel, or there may be some very smaller level of configurability. Maybe if you're externally amplifying your mains, you could switch that to a zone two if you're dealing with a receiver or something like that. But in the case of the Trinoff, you have complete freedom to define what all these XLR outputs are doing and what role they play in your system and how everything relates together. And of course, that microphone, the whole calibration, that's an $800 microphone, right? That's more expensive than most people spend on their entire receiver. 
just to do calibration for a device like this. So how much better is that? I don't know, maybe it's sometimes, or it might be hard to quantify, but you would really hope that you're getting something next level right for the money that's being spent for that. And so the third thing that I'll tag, of course, is the performance. But one thing that I'm, I'm, I'm wondering, certainly in the movies that I've watched, it, it sounded great. R this processor continuing to run through my amps and my speakers and so on, it was exceptional. I also thought my Marantz was exceptional. And I am looking to change some things out though because I'm noticing some, some elements of, I think that I can improve in my space, moving to a different type of amplifier sound and a different type of amplifier brand for the speakers that I'm using and other things. I can say so far that I thought the Trinoff has sounded great. I thought my Marantz sounded great. I need to go back to the Marantz and do an ABA type of comparison to really establish, did, okay, did the Trinoff actually really sound better? But the thing that I'm thinking more about is, I think if you're getting better room performance, better system performance, say, out of a Trinoff, it might have less to do with the actual device itself, and it's more to do, again, based on, the, on pro number one and pro number two the platform and the configurability, meaning you're able to tune and measure and adjust your system using a processor like this to a degree above and beyond any receiver, above and beyond more of your integrated style preamplifiers. And so I don't know if necessarily the better performance of a system with a trend off in it really comes from the fact that, oh, it's just a trend off, it just sounds better versus spending the time with it, doing the right configuration, and dialing in all of the settings exactly and completely and accurately for your space. So the other thing that I would say is if you're going to have a device like this, it's generally gonna come with, from some kind of an integrator, somebody that really knows how to set it up, what to do with it, and that sort of thing. So it behooves you to either have access to or use an expert to get the most out of a device like this, particularly with the amount of money that you're spending on it, or you're gonna to have to really be an advanced level of audio video knowledge and home theater knowledge and room structure and tuning knowledge so that you can get the value out of it. I, I couldn't imagine just necessarily buying a device like this in more of a standard type of a home theater configuration, just using the auto optimizer or calibration and calling it a day. If you're going to do that, you might as well go ahead and, and, and not spend 18 grand or more, just go ahead and buy the Marantz, buy an Anthem, buy you know, buy something more at that level. Because if, if you're not tuning, if you're not taking advantage of those configurability features, then I don't think you're necessarily getting the money, the value out of a device like this. And you're also not getting the performance. You, you're not letting it realize its performance potential in your system. So in, in the end, I guess, who is this for? I think it's for people that have really elaborate systems and can tune them and operate them to that real, real high level degree and allow the trend off to get everything that that system is capable of out into the room audibly. So that's kind of my top three, my top three positive thoughts about the trend off. Again, configuration, the base of the platform and the potential that it provides and the performance capability, the performance potential that it provides based on the configuration options, based on using it like that all enabled because of that platform. It really works together pretty sweet. This thing is on a whole new level, a whole higher level of audio video dumb and capability. Again, keep an eye out for a couple more remaining trend off videos. One more about a couple of the things that, that I was less enthused about. Some of the things I wish maybe they would change or improve and then a final verdict. And then I'm back to my Marantz and moving forward into some future updates and future upgrades, a variety of them that I they have in mind and have already been discussing with the finance committee. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more content, of course. Like and please subscribe. Help us grow the channel. We're coming up at the time of recording this video, coming up on 500 subs, moving, moving awesomely fast and want to keep that momentum going. Thanks.